What if I told you that the next set of papers that I'm going to show you here were generated by an AI system or an AI agent in this case? Just take a look. So you can see it has all the sections. You can see it has all these beautiful plots. So it did some experiments. There's background related work. That's very common. There's all these notations for problem definition, methodology, and so forth. So it looks like it has been written by a human being. What you're seeing is actually a paper or a set of papers that were generated by an AI system. And it's a new AI system called the AI Scientist. What you have seen there is an example of a paper that was generated by what this group of researchers are introducing, which is the AI Scientist towards fully automated open-ended scientific discovery. So what this paper introduces is the AI Scientist, which is a fully automatic scientific discovery tool that can run experiments and can generate entire papers. And on top of that, can also review those papers that are being generated. So there is that component as well of automatic review. I would consider this probably one of the most interesting and innovative ways of using AI agents in particular using these large language models. What are we gonna do in this video is go through a summary of what this paper is, what's the innovation here, and what are the main components that were used in this paper. So what they say here is the AI scientist is the first fully automated and scalable pipeline for end-to-end -end paper generation. Enabled by recent advances in the foundation models, given a broad research direction and a simple initial code base. The system was designed with different components and basically what you put as input is this initial code base and you basically give it a research direction maybe a topic and some goals that you want to achieve with this particular research maybe some ideas about hypotheses and so on that you want to test and then the AI scientist seamlessly performs ideation so that's one step and literature search experiment planning experiment iterations manuscript writing and peer reviewing to produce insightful papers so it's the thing end to end and what's very remarkable here is that example of that paper that I showed you cost $15. If you think about the whole research process, not saying that this already replaces that research process, but there's a lot of funding that goes into ideation of research, whether it's small research, whether it's bigger research with bigger goals and larger scope, it's quite very intensive, time-consuming and labor-intensive process. I know this because I was a researcher. I was part of a research lab back in the day when I was doing my PhD. Now, there are a lot of implications for something like this going out live and in the public. We're not there yet. I think what this group of researchers is suggesting here is how might we tackle something like this that allows automated experiments? How can we integrate that into our own research processes? And how do we minimize cost and make things a lot more efficient? I think this is the angle from which this group is coming. It's not about replacing researchers, it's more about how do we develop these agent or agentic systems to help us in this whole process. So you might work with a system similar to like a co-pilot, collaborate with that system and run an experiment, write code, write code base, very large code bases, and that system is helping you and enabling you to build that. And I think it's helping a lot of developers already. Similarly here with the AI scientist, the idea is that you can offload some experiments that you think is tedious or maybe that you need help on. Maybe you don't know what's the next direction and you want to kind of ideate or something like that and you're in that process. Something like this can be able to run several experiments and can do that simultaneously and produce results and then you review them and so you work with the system similar to like the copilots of the world. Now what are they using? They're using basically the state-of-the-art language models. So this is an LLM framework and they use methods like chain of thought, self-reflection, because there's a lot of reasoning components here. There's a lot of input that is coming of different types into the system and something they mentioned later on is that they are mostly working with text, textual type of information and also like plots, which are really important when you think about experimenting you always have like these charts and these systems should be able to understand charts and make notes out of it as well. And so that's really important capability. Now, they also pair this with a coding assistant called Aider. So that's another popular coding assistant. And so they're using, again, multiple different systems here to build this general system that can automate this whole process of writing the paper and reviewing it as well. So the AI scientist then performs an automated paper reviewing process, as I mentioned before, using guidelines from a standard machine learning conference. This doesn't happen from scratch. You still need to provide provide the system some ideas, some initial ideas, maybe an initial code base. Now what this particular system focuses on is creating what are the necessary components to basically optimize the generation process of a high quality paper that passes a certain standard. And I read from the paper that they can produce papers that can meet conference level standard, which is kind of incredible and absolutely mind blowing at the same time. So this is the methodology here. You can see that this idea generation phase. So you have some idea and plan that you're providing to the model. Then you have some kind of novelty check because what you want to do is you want to filter out ideas that are simple or ideas that don't really push at the boundaries 
years of science, whatever field that may be. And then they have something like an idea scoring and archiving. And then it goes into an experiment iteration. So there's going to be iteration on this experiment phase. You have the experiment template, which is also designed here. And you have Ader and the language models that collaborate to develop a plan and develop these experiments, execute experiments, receive feedback, update the plan, and continue to do this in an iterative way until you have some interesting results or until it meets some number of iterations. So there are some criteria for that in the way how they have designed it. And I found it interesting because I think for experimentation, there has to be a way how to store previous results, update a plan if the results are not interesting enough or does not meet the criteria for the quality of that paper that they're aiming for. Or maybe there's an experiment that wasn't conducted or something was missed. That is a type of a component that's really important for such a process. This is what they discuss in the entire paper. After generating numerical data plots and all this information, then they're ready to go into the paper write-up, right? This is the last process. So there's a manuscript template. So it's based on a template. All these processes are based on templates. So there's some input, and these inputs usually come from a human, right? Someone that's an expert in this space or that's an expert at write writing research papers. And again, we use LLM and Ader as well to help compose the manuscript. And this is important because obviously when you write papers, like this paper that you see here, that's usually written in some tool or some type of system, like a LaTeX, for instance, finding a manuscript, and then there is a reviewing component, and then it goes back and it can iterate. So that's kind of the general picture of this AI scientist framework. Um, I've explained to you, I've given you an overview of this at a high level. You can go through the details yourself. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. There are lots of interesting bits here. For instance, like they're using this Ader code assistant that is given the results and told to take notes in the style of an experimental journal. So it's a very capable system. And there's also some replanning that happens, right? Because not every experiment will lead to interesting results. And so they're mentioning that here. They also mentioned that they, in the future, want to do include other like advanced data visualizations and other modalities as well. Could be voice, could be images, videos, whatever that may be. And this whole process is repeated up to five times. And eventually all this information is generated using Python and the scientist makes a note of describing what each plot contains, enabling the safe figures and experimental notes to provide all the information required to write up a paper. And that's the whole process. So this is just showing you the write-up, what's the process for writing the paper. And finally, this automated paper reviewing, which I won't go through here. They have some comparison results here on this reviewing system. They're showing you here what's the human reviewer, how it performs, and you can see how GPT-40 one shot is performing already very close to a human reviewer. All right, so that's the human reviewer. And then finally, I want to show you one of the case studies here. So they are generating a paper. They mentioned here that they have chosen some paper around diffusion models and they're describing what that generation of idea, what that process looked like, right? Again, they're providing some initial templates, providing some initial code example. In the initial code example, it could be, for instance, if it's a transformer model, it could be a basic transformer model code doing some operation on some very standard toy example data set. In this case, they have chosen that as well. Then there is generation of the experiments. So these are the experiments. This is like generating the code and this is either doing all its work. And so it can generate the code and execute that as well. And then finally, when you have all the results and some criteria has been satisfied, that iterative experimentation phase, then the generation of paper comes into play. And for this, they notice a few things. A few things are very particularly impressive from the paper that was generated in this particular case study is that they mentioned that there is precise mathematical description of the algorithm. I think these models are pretty good at that. Uh, that's not surprising. Comprehensive write-up of experiments as well. They can write long-form content and so on. Good empirical results, new visualizations, and there's much more. So this is just a preview of the paper that was generated. And then here are some pathologies, basically where the model might struggle a bit. And they noticed that, for instance, lack of justification of certain design choices. Uh, the local branch of the noise network operates on an upscale version of the original input and double the original dimensionality. Once this matches the code, there's no discussion of why this is reasonable and a more rigorous paper would provide by ablations to this. And also this one I've seen before. So I'm actually running some experiments on scientific papers myself. If you all know my background with LLMs, I actually worked on a popular project called Galactica when I was at Meta. And something that was I was really interested in is how can we understand, analyze these charts, analyze bits of information in papers, like equations and figures and all these other wonderful things that you see in papers and ask questions, ask very complex questions, retrieve information and so on. And something that I noticed even back then is that these models really, really struggle and tend to hallucinate a lot when it comes to, for instance, type of GPU hardware or something like that. So you can see here V100 GPUs were used, it says, but that wasn't used here. In reality, they use the H100 GPUs. And I've noticed this in, in, even in 
my current experiments. It also guesses the Python versions without checking, so that's really bad as well. And then there's other things like artifacts from experimental logs. There is use of some particular lingo, which is not very common in professional write-ups. Then there's presentation of intermediate results as well. Minimal references. If you leave them all to do references, they also really are bad at this and they tend to be super biased. So you need to kind of debias that by potentially giving access to some external source, which has semantic solar, but even then it might have some biases towards the more popular papers or something like that. Anyway, so there is the review here. This is the entire assessment of the paper itself with all the scores towards the end and the decisions was reject. And then now here to have some final comments from the authors themselves of the paper. And I thought these were interesting too. So you can take a look at that. And that's about it. They run a couple of experiments. There's a lot of experimental results here and there's a bunch of paper examples Samples that were generated. You can see all the prompts, all the templates that were used in this work. It's very innovative the way they're combining all of these components. This is very close to what we wanted to do with the Galactica paper, where we wanted to produce papers. We kind of tackled this in a very different way. What I like about this approach is that it's using these external components. It's using the system that can execute code and can produce information like plots and, and notes and so on that could be useful for the model to you know, run the experiments in a reliable way and not just make up experiments. And so that grounding is really important and that external tool like Ader is really important to use for such a system. This is incredible. I think agents are taking over in 2024 and I'm excited about it. Yesterday, I posted a video on another agent that's about code or code generation, understand how to fix issues, in code bases. This is along the same lines and I really enjoyed reading these papers and I always learned something new. And so hopefully you enjoyed this one as well. Take a look at the paper for all the details and that'll be it for this video. Thank you for listening. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and I'll see you all on the next one.